Oh, is that you, Esther? Oh, hello, Esther. John Truitt? Yes? Hey, wait a minute. I've come here to ask you something. Hey, cut it out, Esther. The next time you pick, hey, on, cut somebody, it out. pick on somebody your own size, what do you mean hitting a seven-year-old child? Esther! If there's anything I hate, loathe, despise, and abominate, it's a bully! I want to sleep in Esther's bed, Mama. Of course, darling. Oh, I hate to think what your father's going to say when he hears about this. He may even strike that truth, boy. He won't have to, Mama. I just took care of him. I was drunk last night, dear mother. I was drunk the night before. Esther, your dress. Oh, that must have happened when he was trying to hold me off. I bit him. I bit him, too. Did you, Tootie? That's not what Tommy Berkheimer says. I've just been talking to him. Did the trolley go off the gra- tracks, Grandpa? No, but the cable came off when the motorman put on the brakes so fast. At least that's what Tommy tells me. What are you talking about? It seems the kids had found an old suit of clothes, so they stuffed it with straw, and somebody put it on the trolley tracks. We thought the car would go off the tracks. Tootie Smith, why, you're nothing less than a murderess. You might have killed dozens of people. Oh, Rose, you're so stuck up. Tootie, how did you get that lip? How? Because John Truett butted in. He dragged me up an alley so the policeman wouldn't get me. Huh. As though policemen never pay attention to girls. But I yanked his hair out and got away. Then I fell down and cut my lip. Oh, what I'm going to do to you. Oh, yes, leave her alone. <laughs> oh, well, what's so funny? Tootie, honestly, you're the most deceitful, sinful little creature I've ever seen. And for two cents, I'd... <laughs> Merciful heavens. John! Oh, no, Esther, not again, please. Oh, John, John, there's been a terrible mistake. There has? Oh, yes, you see, I... Oh, did I do that? Black eye, and this, and this, and this. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. No, oh, that's all right. How's Tootie? Oh, she'll live. Oh, John, it's, it's awfully nice of you to accept my apology. Well, if you're not busy tomorrow night, could you beat me up again? <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess I better be getting home. Oh, uh, before you go, would you mind helping me turn out the lights? I'm afraid of mice. <laughs> Looks like most of the lights are out. Wouldn't take a minute to turn them on again. Well, wouldn't that be kind of wasting a minute? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it would, Esther. <sighs> You know, you've got a mighty strong grip for a boy. If I ever catch you fibbing again, Tootie, I'll give you something that you'll... Oh, Esther, dear, I hope... Why, Esther, is there something wrong? Yes, Mama. Roses are red and John's name is Tootie. Esther's in love, and we always knew it. Mama, can't you make Tootie stop? Is this where the Smith family lives? Why, hello. Come on in. Hello. Oh, home, Papa. I almost got killed. We stopped the trolley, and I lost my tooth, and Esther bit John Truett. Anna! Tootie fell, dear, and cut her lip. She's fine. Oh, that's a brave little girl, Tootie. Oh, uh, Anna, for you. Why, Alonzo, what a lovely box of candy. Is anything wrong? (laughs) Anna, the firm is sending me to New York. Well, that's lovely, dear. Just as long as you'll be home for Thanksgiving. No, you don't understand. I'm to head the office there. We're moving to New York. Moving? To New York? I don't believe it. Well, I simply don't believe it. Why, Anna, I thought you'd be overjoyed. But New York is such a big city, and... Well, what'll the children do? The same as they do here. Go to school, play, have their friends over. What friends, Alonzo? Yes, what friends? The friends they'll meet in New York. And Tootie, just ready to be promoted. And Esther, a senior. I've worked all my life to be a senior. And Rose in the Conservatory of Music. Yes, what about me in my life? You can take that with you. It's settled. We're going. Well, I must say you're being very cold-blooded. Well, I've got our future to think about. I've got to worry about where the money's coming from. With Lon in Princeton and Rose in Music School and Tootie... Money. I hate, loathe, despise, and abominate money. You also spend it. 
And what about Katie and Grandpa and the chickens? Not that we have many left. That's a minor detail we can discuss later. So I'm a minor detail, am I? You know very well, Papa, I was talking about the chickens. Oh, never mind what happens to your family, <laughs> as long as the chickens are provided for. Now, 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 I guess we're all a little excited. We'll talk this over calmly tomorrow. Well, what's this? Hickory nut cake, as only Katie can make it. I can't go to New York. I simply can't. I'm taking my cap. Winona goes wherever I go. Where'll you keep her cooped up in a tenement? Oh, good evening, Katie. Couldn't help overhearing. Don't they have houses in New York? Rich people have houses. People like us live in flats. Thousands of people in one building. And what about the World's Fair? Yes, just when St. Louis is going to be the center of, intra- of attraction of the entire universe. Katie, this cake is as light as a feather. You can bake anything in our stove. They got little box stoves in them tenements. <clears throat> well, pass your plates, everybody. Have some cake. Thanks. I guess I got some things to do. Excuse me. Oh, you going up too, Grandpa? I, uh, I'll help Katie with the ice cream dishes, Mom. Me too. As long as we're moving, it won't matter if I break some. <sighs> Aren't you afraid, Anna? Alone in this room with a, a criminal? Now, dear, if you think it's best to move to New York, why, why that's what we'll do. Eat your cake, Alonzo. Ah, it's good to hear you play, Anna. My, that's a nice song. Remember when I used to sing it? Yes. <clears throat> oh, darling. And farewell the oh, and I. That's, that's just From lovely. Tootie and I, well, I, I guess we'll have some cake after all. I want the piece with the rose petals. Mighty nice song, mighty nice. Rose and I, well, there's nothing like good music in a piece of hickory cake. No, sir. <laughs> No, I'll bet New York is is going to be just just fine. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act three of Meet Me in St. Louis, starring Judy Garland, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake, will follow in a moment. Our guest tonight, blonde, blue-eyed Lola Deem, came to Hollywood from Akron, Ohio, by way of Chicago. When MGM saw the screen test she made there, they lost no time in getting her to the coast. I understand you're studying hard, Lola. I am, Mr. Keeley, but I'm having fun, too. Such as? Oh, watching pictures being made and seeing as many previews at the studios as possible. That's where I saw The Yearling, Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's new Technicolor picture, which people are talking about for the Academy Award. Mm, A superb example of fine acting and photography. And how I envy Jane Wyman in her role opposite Gregory Peck. Oh, oh, a Gregory Peck (laughs) fan, eh? Mm, Who isn't? And Claude Jarman, Jr., is so appealing as Jody with his pet fawn. Well, it's often the details that count in making a successful picture, Lola. For instance, the company spent months in Florida to make each sequence in the yearling true to life. Tell me, Lola, do you have any special rule for success? Yes, Mr. Keeley, to profit by experience. And I'm doing that right now. How is that, Lola? Well, when I was working as a radio receptionist back east, I found that good grooming was important. So, naturally, I used Lux Flakes. You see, I was on a budget, and I saved a lot by wearing blouses and sweaters I could Lux myself. They always looked wonderful. Hollywood studios feel much the same way about Lux, Miss Dean. They've discovered by actual experience how safe it is for colors. So they make it a rule to use Lux Flakes for everything washable. Well, I do too, but I wish I could find more Lux in the Hollywood stores. (laughs) Well, the materials they need to make Lux are scarce. But it's wise to keep on trying. Smart girls like yourself don't risk spoiling nice things with a strong soap. Because they know washing things the wrong way 
can fade colors easily. Tests on all sorts of fabrics prove that. There's no doubt about it. Lux things do stay smart longer. Thank you for coming tonight, Miss Lola Deem. We return you now to William Keeley. Act three of Meet Me in St. Louis, starring Judy Garland as Esther, Margaret O'Brien as Tootie, and Tom Drake as John. It's the day before Christmas, a week before the family moves to New York, and five hours before the annual Christmas ball at the Women's Club. And Alonzo Smith, Jr., home from Princeton for the holidays, has a problem. Oh, Lonnie, you needn't be so grouchy just because Lucille Ballard doesn't think you're good enough to take her to the dance tonight. A girl has a right to go to a dance with anyone she wants. I, I just didn't ask her soon enough. Everyone knows Miss Ballard is just an Eastern snob. Well, you're in a fine mood. All because Warren Sheffield asked her instead of you. That's not true. Rose could have had any man she wanted. Except Warren Sheffield. Everyone knows that Lucille Ballard is just throwing herself at Warren because of his father's money. Now, that's what I call real Christmas spirit. Now, just a minute, Katie. Didn't it ever occur to you that you might take your sister to the dance? My own brother. I'd be the laughing stock of St. Louis. Well, thank you. Oh, Katie's absolutely right. Oh, Lon, it's our last dance in St. Louis, and it'd be tragic if either of you missed it's it. It's all right for you to talk. You have a date, a real one. Well, Rose, if I didn't have a date with John Truett, which I have, I'd be thrilled to go with my own brother. Well, I'd be willing, Rose. I mean, I'd be glad to. You would? <laughs> Why, you two will have the best time of anybody. You won't even have to be polite to each other. Yes, it's half past seven. Oh, oh yes, you look grand, oh. simply grand. That oh. corset makes your figure just elegant. Oh, I feel elegant, but I can't breathe. But if we're going to wreck Lucille Ballard's evening, we definitely need every ounce of allure. Oh, Rose, don't you think I could be alluring without a corset? No, Esther, I don't. After all, you're competing with an Eastern girl. We'll have to monopolize all the worthwhile men. <sighs> Well, there'll only be about 20 boys worth looking at. We could certainly handle 20 men. But what about John Truett? Oh, I'll devote myself to John. But in between times, I'm going to make my presence felt amongst the others. Oh, Esther. What is it, Tootie? Somebody at the back door to see you. Who? <laughs> Gosh, do you look funny. Oh, Tootie. Rose, could I please wear a corset, now, too? Tootie. Who's at the back door? Oh, somebody that looks like John Truett. Oh, oh Rose, give me my kimono. I wonder what he could want. What are you giving me for Christmas, Rose? You'll find out tomorrow. I certainly hope it's a hunting night. Nothing I need worse than a good hunting night. But, John, well, come on in. Yes, I've got some bad news. My, my tuxedo. Well, what about it? It's at the tailor's. You see, I was playing basketball, and when I got there, it was closed. But can't you borrow one? I've tried, but everybody who's got one is going to the ball. What about your father's? That was my father's. Well, then find the tailor and make him open the shop. Well, I know his name is Johnson, but I don't know where he lives. Oh, oh this is simply ghastly. Oh, yes, I wouldn't blame you if you never spoke to me again. Oh, well, you, you didn't do it on purpose. I guess there's nothing else I can say Unless you want to do something else tonight. No, I, I better just stay home and do some packing. You know, we're leaving St. Louis in a few days. I know. And this is a fine going away present I'm giving you. I'll bet you really hate me. Oh, no, John, I don't hate you. I, I just hate basketball. 